Welcome to Embrace the Red. Today we're going to talk about performing port proxying on Windows. This is something that is very useful and it's really not as well known on how to do this on Windows. It can also be very handy during red teaming, for instance. Let's talk about the scenario real brief. So I do have on this machine here, I have a web server listening on port 8888 and it's only listening on localhost. So you can see in this page it shows, it's just a very simple page. It says listening on just a loopback interface. So our goal now is to forward this port and make it accessible remotely. So have it actually being exposed in a different interface. And in order to do that, um, we need to be administrator on Windows. Like I opened this PowerShell prompt here as administrator. And then there's the netsh interface command and it has a port proxy feature that allows you to add entries for routing traffic between these interfaces. And what we're gonna do now is we are just gonna use port proxy and we say we wanna add uh, IPv4 to IPv4 connection and we want to listen on all interfaces. So this is our new port listening on all interfaces and the listening port should be let's say 44480 and then we're gonna say connect address this is the web server on the loopback interface that we want to connect to and we want to connect to the port connect port equals 8888 so after we run that we now have this added to our list the problem is that the firewall would not allow now this port to be accessible from remote because Windows by default will block this port. So in order to add now a rule to the firewall to allow access remotely to this endpoint, we use again NetSH firewall, advanced firewall. So this is sort of the feature how you can add a rule to the firewall and you can give it a name and let's say, let's put an underscore underneath so it shows up on the very top of the list. And you say that direction is in and the action is you want to allow. So if you're familiar in, in Linux, for instance, with the, uh, the simple firewall, the UFW, uh, it's sort of very, very similar. And the protocol is TCP. And by the way, you can also do this uh, with PowerShell commands as well on, on Windows. But since I am using NetSH for the port proxying, I'm also using it for, for the firewall to keep it kind of the same. And then you say the port that you want to expose is 44480. So this now adds a rule to the firewall. Oops, a typo somewhere. Advanced firewall. So there's a firewall missing here. So we need to, so, and this now adds a rule to the firewall. And let me show you actually what happened. So this is my firewall list. And if I go here on this machine and refresh the list, you can see that now on the very top, since I use an underscore, we actually have this entry that a new port is exposed on the firewall. So that's basically all there is now. And if I go now to my other machine, go here to the browser, and the machine, the remote machine is called Saturn in this case. And we said, what was this, 44480. And now you can see we have this web server exposed remotely. So we can now from a different machine access this particular web server. So in order to kind of revert all of that, you would just use kind of the same commands. You can just use, so you would say the firewall, we want to revert it. You can use the rule name to match. And then instead of add, we say delete. And for NetSH interface port proxy, what I usually do is just say reset, that sets it back. So that also means if there have, would have been other ones, they would have been reset as well. But that's sort of the simple way to do it. Okay, I hope this was useful. And yeah, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.